Hi guys, I just got an email from a subscriber, the headline, the, the subject had a headline, are you all right? Are you okay? No, no. Had another fabulous day here at the apartment complex. If you have not seen the videos on the cats and the cat problem, the feral cat problem with maintenance and property managers, they put actually the responsibility on me and another neighbor because they don't do anything but complain about it um, and well they don't care if they die and they have been taking actions by blocking up basement window wells knowing that there are cats in there and they lie they lie they lie they lie my getting an eviction notice based on lies then I'm told that I can stay clearly showing that the eviction was not really legitimate um, oh that's right I complained about the constant noise that many tenants were very upset about and they didn't want to complain because well they didn't want to be retaliated against I got retaliated against and then the maintenance guys lied to the property manager why because well I stood up to one of the maintenance guys who lied about somebody else and I know that he lied so I said I am not dealing with any more fucking lies done and your well if they die they die talking about the kittens you don't say that to me because I'm gonna get upset and I did and I walked away haven't spoken to him yet this guy is gunning for me to get evicted again so what has happened today you know, bizarre things have been ha the stress, the feeling like, wow, okay, I don't understand this behavior, um, and I've just never lived in a place like this, where the property manager will actually go after a tenant. Dare they complain about anything? The meanness is frightening, actually the vindictiveness where they don't care what they do to another person's life at all if they're out for you they're gonna get you it's like it's like having an apartment complex in third grade you have third grade tenants with third graders operating the apartment complex and these third graders well they no longer want to play ball with you and they do everything to get you out of the game they're Christians by the way I posted the video, fake ass Christians. Haven't read any of the comments, don't plan on it. I'm done. I'm done. With the fake ass Christians. You can attack me, you can write whatever it is that you've heard me not say. I got an email from a long term subscriber who wrote, I know you have a love hate relationship with Christians. I don't. I don't. How many subscribers have left comments? I know you hate Christians. You see, these are the people who do not want to hear what someone has to say because it hits home. So instead of hearing what they're saying, they put into their mind, oh, this person hates Christians. A lot of people do that the filters that operate in one's brain the presumptions that come automatically they're not aware of it they can't listen well so they just write these comments and they think that it's the truth and it's so far from the truth give me a real genuine Christian Please, <laughs> please, 
I know they're out there, but there are only a few. But I will walk with them, and I'd love them to be in my life. Because in many ways, I actually feel like I am far more a Christian than most Christians. I don't call myself that. I don't have the beliefs that many Christians have. I just don't. But I got myself on that narrow road. How? Via the truth. Truth has been my higher power. And truth equals Christ, equals love, equals God. You can't have one without the other. So there's an awful lot of Christians who do not love Christ. Oh, they think they do, but they don't. They don't. Because they're still living a lie, they're still lying, and they're still behaving in ways that do so much harm. And now that I'm in Christian territory, wow, do I see it. Wow, do I see it. But also bizarre behavior that, well, maybe it's a southern thing, something that I've never encountered. See, when we northerners have falling outs, fights with each other, we don't then just see the person the next day and act like nothing happened. That's what I've experienced here. Not just with one, but with several people, and it's really, okay, uh, how do you manage this? What, what, um, and you walk away thinking, okay, I know this happened, but they seem to act like nothing happened, and what's up with that? These are the people who force you into their terms. It's, I don't know what to do with these people. So what happened? I posted videos on what's been happening with the feral cats here. I posted videos on the lawn mower and my eviction based on lies. And then very quickly after I get evicted, I hear, oh, you can stay. Okay. This is the kind of behavior that is like, so you don't do this to people's lives. Uh, the eviction based on lies then, okay, you can stay, clearly showing that it's not a legitimate eviction, but you now have created in that tenant a feeling of, I'm not secure here, and if they can't leave because they don't have any place to go, oh, thank you for your offers, but I can't. Oh, try, try finding yourself in, in my shoes. Or imagine yourself in my shoes. What it would be like to have to rely on strangers. They're strangers to me because you guys know something about me based on my posting. But the subscribers who have reached out to me, I knew nothing about them. Some I corresponded with, spoke to on the phone. They seemed fine. They seemed okay. Well, then you get into somebody's life, and you see how not okay they are. Some terrify you, and you run, and can't go back, even if you've left things there. Some play you, and you're out thousands. Some lie about you, and so devastate you, because they won't accept responsibility for the lie. They're Christian. But they will talk in a way that you say you lied. I heard you lie. You saw me here. You lie when you were on the phone. And they will say, I talk to this person all the time. And that's not the point. But that's the kind of communication, because they cannot accept that they did something that they know is wrong, 
and they can't take responsibility for it. Or the last one that I had in my life that so um, well if I had a life then I probably you know I saw things in the beginning that I knew were concerning but the relationship based on AA and raising one's consciousness and yeah, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna. But it was all a lie. And a lot of people, what I have found is they are so lonely, they invite you because you have no place to go, right? And you get there and you know you can't stay. Because there's no life for you there. And when you leave, then they lie about you. And I, I, one can only speculate because these are not people that know how to talk. So, uh, what can I speculate? That they were lonely, they wanted somebody awake in their life. Because I couldn't either live in their home how they lived. I don't care how people live. I don't judge how people live. But it caused a lot of stress for me because it was so radically different from how I lived. And I knew I had to leave. So I leave and then when I contact them, I then hear that I stole their DVD, The Matrix. And that, what, did you jump on my what are they called? You know, they open the door to the car, the clicker things. Because it's all broken now. Yeah, that's me. I steal people's Matrix DVDs and I jump on their car starters or open doors or whatever. And I'm like, oh, God. So, is it for them, did it trigger abandonment? then they can't deal with that, so they have to attack you and get angry at you and claim that you did something that you never did. It's been a trip living this, because what you're living is, uh, well, it's similar to that family that you grew up, that malignant narcissistic family, where they're always telling you, you're the problem, you've done this when you haven't done it, um, you're and you're getting to see, oh my God, years ago, remember when you thought that you were attracted to these people because it's familiar and we're attracted to the familiar. And then after years and years of really becoming very aware of how people behave and you walking away from that familiar because you so desperately need healthy relationships where people are honest and where people are working on themselves. If they do something wrong, they can take responsibility for it. And you're in AA and a lot of the friends are in AA and you're supposed to be working on your issues and nobody does. So, it's not that I'm attracted anymore. It's that there's a lot of fucked up people in the world. Many are Christians. And the last experience I had so devastated me. It still hurts. I don't have a life. I don't have the resources to distract myself, to, you know, yeah. If I had all of that, like the other people do, I'd probably be as fine as they are. But it hurts more when you're left with nothing but the betrayal, the gaslighting, 
It's a trip, man. It's a trip how many people do this. You don't have to be a pathological narcissist. You just have to be somebody who can't accept responsibility. And any anything that you deem as criticism, boom. Defenses go up. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Years before they finally admit to one lie, but then years come by, you have lie after lie after lie, and then they call you a liar, like they're in third grade. You just so need them to take a look at why they lie. You don't care about the lie. You know people lie. It goes on all the time. But you want, especially when you've been told that this this is what they want. They're in AA. They're going to be working on those issues. And they do nothing. They're a dry drunk, not sober. They're Christian. You use their language. Lying means that Satan is in you. Doesn't matter. Because they didn't lie. No, you did lie. And then they claim they don't know what a lie is. But you said something that was not true. That's a lie. And you keep walking away like your head is just so like, because um, they have a good affect. They keep reeling you in. They keep saying some of the right things. And then boom. They know how much the truth means to you. They call you a liar. What did I lie about? They can't figure it out. They don't know. But you lie. Okay. All right. They know your life has been destroyed by lies. They know that your integrity now is everything. And it is, uh, it's attached to you living honestly, you speaking honestly, you not lying because you got on that narrow road and there's no way back. This is now you. But now they're calling you a liar. Because they can't face the truth about themselves. Well, you hang on to these people and it will only get worse. They will rip you apart. And that's what happens. So, the last one so destroyed my trust. Now, I still have, I take what you say on face value, it's what you say. I have no reason to not believe you because, well, you know, I know you in the cyber world, I know you in life, I haven't encountered any lies, but I don't necessarily trust you. That's the ripple effect of liars. If you have too many in your life, you suddenly are standing back. You're not going to get close to anybody because you've been betrayed and devastated too many times by those people who said they loved you and cared about you and they were your friend, but friends don't lie to one another. And if they do lie, they take responsibility and don't lie again. So when they keep lying, they know who you are because of those really deep, long conversations. And then suddenly it's like you're in a relationship with somebody, a friendship with somebody who's just... They've become... They've become, uh, well, using Christian language, they're driven by Satan, claiming that they're Christians, and there's nothing Christ-like about them. In the beginning, there was. You were so wowed by them. And then, well, you learned early on you saw the disintegration, which means that they were saying things 
but their action, how they live their life, it wasn't matching. You know that you're in a relationship with a disintegrated human being. And if they won't work on themselves to integrate that, which means getting honest with yourself, and it means facing the fact, okay, I'm lying about who I am in the world. That's a hard thing to do, but it's absolutely necessary, it's required. If you are about the truth, required if you call yourself a Christian. Because everything about Christ is about living that moral life. And that means not lying. So, if you claim to love Christ and you're not doing anything to fix yourself up, you ain't about Christ. I love Christ. Don't know, myth, real, doesn't matter to me. The most powerful example of how one should live their life. Most Christians don't. They use they use Christ to feel better about themselves. That's what I see a lot here in Christian territory. Look, you know, there's such arrogance. You guys believe that you have the truth. You hold the truth. You are. Everybody else is wrong. You're right. You gotta be saved. You got the truth. It's in the Bible. Well, that Bible says lying is an abomination. I want to focus on homosexuals being an abomination. Not the lying. Not that very clear, succinct, simple message in the Bible. Christians don't want to talk about it. Don't see any quotes from people about that. See, a few Christians leaving that quote, go, you know, I never knew you. But most argue about what Bible is legitimate and throw down their quotes and they fight over interpretation or they attack people who don't believe what they believe. Or they hear videos like this and claim, you hate Christians. Well, most are really <laughs> the well-adjusted to a deeply disturbed society. If we had a majority of Christians who were actually real, trying to live a Christ-like life, this evil, this nightmare, this suffering would never have manifested there were so many of you and still are. So why did this evil manifest? It manifested because it's in most of the Christians who don't want to do anything about how they live, what they do. I like my comfortable lifestyle, so I don't care if it's satanic, I'm just going to claim that it's not and ignore that part. I'll gossip, I'll lie, I'll manipulate, I'll gaslight people, I'll rip to shreds people I call friends, I'll betray, I'll be vindictive, I'll be vicious, I'll be mean, but I'm Christian. Really done with that. Hope Christians wake up. The genuine ones, where are you? Where are you? But you don't need to be Christian. I don't care. I just need real. I need honest. I need people who can take responsibility for what they do. I need, I need real. Not this bullshit crap. 
you know, this immaturity where, oh my God, I need approval from everybody and I'm just going to act in the world to get that approval and put that mask on. And, oh, and the only way that I can get approval is if I'm, if I'm nice and I'm this, I'm that. But I'm not real and I'm not honest. Yeah. There are so many things in the Bible that struck me as so clear, no interpretation needed. But those aren't the things that most Christians focus on. You know, that narrow road. Narrow, meaning few are on it. And then that, you know, couple that with uh, Jesus saying, Go, I never knew you. Why aren't Christians really talking about that? What does Jesus say? What does he mean when he says, Go, I never knew you. But I proclaimed your name and I did this and I... Go, I never knew you. It means that you lived a pretense, you lied, you were lying to yourself. And when you do that, nobody knows you. But Christ... Oh boy, the first thing for Christians. Absolutely. If you're a Christian, you speak honestly, you live honestly. It's hard. It's hard because when you do that, you get attacked for it. But no, um, Christian or not Christian, I don't hate Christians, I can't stand your overwhelming hypocrisy that just smacks one in the face every single day. No, this nightmare would never have manifested. In fact, God, if Christians were real, genuine, and using Christ as an example of how to live and tried every single day, Oh, Carol, nobody can be perfect. Never said anything about perfection. Oh, but that's what you hear. Because you need to absolve yourself of how you behave. So you think I'm saying perfect. No. You try your best every day to live honestly, speak honestly, to live a moral life. But instead, what I have found, and it's not, not just one, two, three, but a lot of the Christians in my life, wow, you guys, so young, so immature, lack courage, can't take responsibility for anything that you do, and yeah, talk about um, taking the Lord's name in vain. Doesn't mean cursing with God next to the curse. It means calling yourself a Christian and living a satanic life. You can't have it both ways. The spiritual path is really hard. But the Christians that I've been around won't even get on the plate to try. They're too comfortable. And if you bring up any of this, boom, they're attacking you. And some can be very vicious. And, you know, the, their behavior is so immature that it's stunning that they can't see it, you know. Um, I did have an encounter with one who truly became quite vicious and started doing things purposely because, well, we did have those heart-to-heart -heart hearts and this person knows exactly what will make me angry. 
knows that I'm stressed beyond belief and will say exactly those things to make me angry. And I get angry. And then it's the, I don't want to argue. Like, they're just so sane and maintaining um, that they're, they're just, it's you that's crazy. Wow. And then I hear, well, you're vicious too. One thing I'm not is vicious. I'm vicious because I get angry at being treated like shit. Okay. The people that I have cared about, I've, I've stayed too long, but I so wanted them to get honest and to get on that road, you know, to take truth seriously and trust seriously and their Christianity seriously. No, I do not. It's the hypocrisy that I that sometimes makes me angry, sometimes makes me just sick to my stomach, sometimes so heart sick and you don't see the damage because you don't care to look but you guys have created so much harm so much suffering and I am so tired of it so I have lived the hardest year I have ever lived and can't believe that what I'm living here. If you've seen the videos on the cats and on the lawn mowing and my getting evicted and then not evicted and then, you know, dealing with the lying maintenance men and uh, the property manager who only believes that there's like a sick, twisted dynamic going on with the employees here and they're all against the tenants. The maintenance men talk to other tenants about other tenants um, they gun for kicking people out. Now I hear they're going to be kicking out a lot of people for smoking in their apartments. They kicked out five people this week from another complex. Um, they are this, it, it's insane. They're going to send the bill to a tenant for the insulation in the basement being down. They're going to charge her in another building because the feral cats are around her apartment. And the feral cats were getting into the basement. But so do mice and squirrels and possums and skunks, raccoons. But they're going to charge her. Really? Now, I was last week. I, I could I, look. It's it's impossible to tell you everything that I live, but I don't know why my life has gone this way. Why I encounter so many people that don't know how to behave in this world. Oh, they're comfortable, they're fine. What they do to other people, they don't care about. I care about. Care about how I'm treated, but other tenants who they don't seem to care and will hurt them too, um, placing them in a very insecure, like, but some of us have nowhere to go. And what do we do when we're kicked out? They don't care. So last week I walk into a neighbor's apartment and I see the property manager who I've not seen in eight months. 
but wow, there's been tension here, not just with me, other tenants, whole lot of talk about this property manager, but what she has done to me has left me feeling like so much stress and I see her sitting there. Why is she in this apartment? The tenant who lives there, they were very close, Holly, Holly and Gail. Holly treated Gail like shit. Holly blocked Gail on her phone. They never, Gail just never went down to the office to have coffee with her. Nothing. Friendship over. And Holly just knocks on the door eight months later. Pretends like nothing happened. And asks Gail, why didn't you call me back? Well, Gail blocked her. But Gail was very happy that their relationship, that their friendship was back. Gail made herself vulnerable asking, do you think we can get back to the same friendship? See, nothing's talked about. Gail still doesn't understand why Holly just, it's like she's like this split personality or she becomes somebody else, mean, heartless, cruel. Okay, now she's not. Do, does Gail? No, you don't do that here. You just go on like nothing happened. So, but Gail was happy about it. I was happy for Gail because she was very upset about this. And Gail is, well, has often said she has nothing to live for and wants to die. So friendship is very important to Gail, and you can't have that if you can't trust. Okay, Gail's happy about it. The next day goes to have coffee with Holly. Everything's fine. The next day, today, Holly goes, and she's pretty much told to leave the office because Holly wants to talk to Bernardo, who's the maintenance guy. Okay, she leaves. But before that, Bernardo showed up at Gail's. I drive by and I see Bernardo outside Gail, talking to Gail, and I find out he said to Gail, Holly is lying to you. When she was so happy about getting her friend back. Bernardo saying this left her feeling. Bernardo was also talking about me having cats, all this kind of stuff. I didn't have the money to pay pet security. Thank you for your donations because I finally paid pet security yesterday. Threw the slot, not into Holly's hands, and she texted me today, get rid of them. No more pets in studios. This woman is so mean. Oh, but she's Christian. So she feels good about herself being a Christian. This behavior, man. Oof. And many of you will get angry. It's not just Christians behaving like this. Oh, I know. I know. But I'm tired of you calling yourself Christians. Using Christ so you feel better and then you act in the world like you got Satan driving you every single day. I don't like people using anybody. I don't like Christians using Christ so that they feel better. So that they can delude themselves into believing all of the horseshit that they believe. But they don't live, even try to live a Christ-like life. That is what a Christian, a true, real, genuine Christian is. Oh no, Carol, it's just that um, you know that you have been saved by Jesus. It doesn't matter what you do. Well, I call bullshit on that. Why then would Jesus say, go, I never knew you? 
Why do they say lying is an abomination? Why did Jesus say, I will forgive you of your sins? Go and sin no more. Why did he say that? If all you have to do is be saved by Jesus. You delude yourself, you use the Bible to justify, you don't focus on the most important parts, you focus on, ah, it's all prophesied, Carol. Maybe, maybe it's prophesied because God knew that there was going to be so many fake-ass Christians. And he knew the evil would just continue to roll on because he knew that people, there would only be a few on that narrow road who would stand up to the evil, who would work out the evil that they had within themselves and then get on that narrow road and really try to live a moral life. Well, he probably knew there would only be a few. I'm sure he knew that there would be an awful lot of good people sitting around doing nothing, just watching all of the evil, or ignoring it, or not caring about it. He probably knew there would be so many self-centered people using anything for their own purposes so that they felt good, not actually doing anything to get on that narrow road, which is very painful. The whole trick is really painful. Why? Because there are so few on it. And because once you get on that road, you see the importance. My God, you understand the importance of behaving rightly, not lying. You understand what friendship really means. And it's not just girls want to have fun. It's about helping one another grow, become better people, and doing that work, calling one another out. It's not lying and manipulating and gaslighting and then projecting what you've done onto somebody else and all the bullshit. No. Because all of that bullshit comes about when you have a relationship that is not real. And you have someone who is setting the terms and you better, you better agree to the terms, which means they can do anything, you were just to remain silent if you want to be their friend. They have their ways of manipulating that. But the relationship is not an equal relationship. They want to have power over you. When you have somebody in a vulnerable position, it's easy. to have people who are comfortable and fine have that power over you. But you still need that equal relationship. You can't get it. Um, and then they just beep up in, back into your life and it's like they act like nothing happened. I have encountered this so often, it's like, okay, how do people do this? Well, gal, very upset, doesn't know who to trust, doesn't know who to believe, doesn't felt that Holly wasn't her friend anymore. 
I pay the pet security and I find out I have to get rid of the cats and I can't because I fell in love with them. So I don't know what's going to be happening with my life. Um, Where are the people who are real, who are honest? My God. I do not know how to operate in this world. I honestly don't. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to not care about these cats. And then I see the cats, and they are well taken care of, and they have so much fun with one another, and they're in such a safe environment. Get rid of them. Don't feed them. And then you hear you can feed them, but then don't feed them again. And you're like, all right, these rules, they just arbitrarily change. And I don't know, because my brain is not in good working order, order. Um, and I don't have any support here, so uh, everything that I've done has been done with, okay, what am I going to encounter? But you know what? You get on that narrow road. You stay on it long enough, and you can't go back. You can't take a left or right. Everything is just forward. You see how connected it is how we treat one another to this nightmare that we're living. And we've got to clean one up. We have to clean ourselves up. We can't keep sinning and believing we're Christian. Sorry, it doesn't work that way. You can delude yourself. Oh, you can get angry. You can keep marching on with those delusions in your head. Knock out everybody who holds you accountable, but eventually it's going to catch up with you. You're not about God. You're not about Jesus. You're about you. Me, me, me. And that's not the spiritual walk. Because those who are serious and trust me, I didn't even know that I was on this path, really, until I found myself with it so deeply ingrained, with the truth meaning everything, because without it, life is rendered meaningless. All of the Christians that have betrayed me, I have said, do you understand that you render life meaningless, our relationship meaningless, everything meaningless, if you can't stop lying? And do you realize that this is Satan, not Christ? Don't want to hear it. I, I could go on forever. Get rid of the Jews, and the world would be fine. Jews, they're all about money and lying. And Wow, you haven't noticed any Christians kind of about money and lying? They're degenerates. And Christians aren't. They own all the pornography businesses. You know every owner? It's every Jew, so you know every Jew. The hatred is so antithetical to Christ, but they claim they're Christians. Now, I grew up in New York, predominantly Jewish area. I've had many Jewish, very close friends. I take offense. Either you just don't know Jews, and you've been so socially engineered to go there, 
But I will say, and I got one comment from someone who said, the Jews that she has known have far more character than the Christians. I agree. One relationship I had to end, then thinking about all of the other very close friends that I've had who are Jewish, can't think of one of them lying to me. And there's something about Jews, they can speak the truth if they're not addicted to painkillers and alcohol. You know where you stand. You, you, they're not frightened. They don't have to be very nice and pretend that that's the way Christians are. Just very nice. They never tell you the truth, but they're very nice. Not real, but nice. With my Jewish friends, boom. They've got a problem with you right there and say it. Wow, I like it. Because you get the job done. And whatever the problem is, uh, they can actually communicate, resolve things. I even had one Andrea Bierstein who I still really miss today. She was my tort professor, became a very, very good close friend. And she once accused me of doing something. And I got mad. And, oh yeah. Um, they don't have any problem in expressing their anger. They don't see that that is a bad thing. And then about a year later, Andrea came to me and said, I'm so sorry. What you were saying was the truth, and it wasn't you. Wow! How novel was that? I guess she actually considered me a real friend. The relationship wasn't about her. I'm angry because those Christians in my life have done a lot of damage. Oh, that's right. We don't go there. We Americans, we live tragedy, ignoring the tragedy, the tragicness of it. Look, I can't do the bullshit anymore. I can't do the politics. Nothing is going to change tomorrow with that election. Nothing. I can't get wrapped up in all of the distractions. And it starts with us. You want to get this world back? Yeah. Start thinking about, hmm, what did, what did, was it Gandhi who said, be the change you want to be? Well, I took that seriously. I wanted real. I am real. I desperately need honesty. I'm honest. And I haven't been able to find one person like-minded in that respect. So, we have a problem with the awake people. We've got a problem with Christians. We've got a problem with an awful lot of people who are just full of shit. So no, I'm not okay. Um, I could probably make the argument that I'm grandfathered in. I would never have moved into a place 
if I could not have had pets. No, I had no money. I couldn't have pets. They wandered into my life. I fell in love with them. And yeah, the cats definitely help me get through my days. I'm not, I can't get rid of them. They came, especially the feral who decided, okay, now I'm not going to be feral. She's still pretty feral with other people. She runs from them. Why? She feels completely safe with me. Okay. But I have this idea that they deserve to remain safe and not be booted out and and have people take care of them. You know, I, so many Christians in this apartment complex and well, doesn't it say somewhere you're the guardians of... No. Don't bother me. I'm all about myself. I'm not caring. If we had those real Christians, they would care. They would be concerned. And it would be fabulous living here. No. We're, we're just going to put the burden on you, the property manager, and you trap, and we don't really care, but we make a fuss about it all the time, and we claim that, well, you can't be feeding, and uh, now you can't even have your own cats, and I did put little beds outside and it's covered because it's raining and yeah, they're sleeping in it and sometimes I walk over to it and I go, oh my god, five orange little kittens. They're safe. They're warm. They're fed. They're taken care of. That's how life should be. Instead, let them die. Don't do anything with them. You attract them if... I can't live this way. This is not anything... I had a hard time operating in this world always, but now... Now I don't... I just don't know. And the two, me and the other neighbor, are really feeling the burden of everything. Other neighbors are feeling scared they're going to get kicked out. And will anybody confront the property manager on how she's treating the tenants and what she's doing? No. No courage. So let the evil roll. All right, sorry for going on. If we don't, Start with us, start with you, start with me, start right here. Everything else is entertainment until you die and you're out of here. Everything starts right here with your own self. Being the change that you want to see. Don't be screaming about everybody lying if you haven't examined your own self yet. Because if you haven't, you're not. You haven't even stepped onto that narrow road. So, you're thinking you're going to heaven? Sorry. Sorry. That part in the Bible where Jesus says, Go, I never knew you. And it's a narrow road, so few are getting in. So how come Christians don't talk about, hmm, few getting in narrow road? Oh, she's a saying, I don't know you. Go, go, go. Okay, what does all that mean? And what does that mean for me? Why do I think I'm going to heaven if only a few are going? Why am I going? Why is Jesus going to be scooping me up to live eternal bliss? And don't you think it's a little self-centered of you to be sitting around just waiting to die? so that you can finally be in your permanent home, living eternal bliss. But you don't have any responsibilities or obligations here on earth. Wow. 
let the suffering just go. Oh, I feel at peace because I believe in Jesus. What we have are a lot of Americans who are really just children who have never grown up. And because they are still on that low road, they're all about me, me, me. And they will use anything to justify how they live, delude themselves with all of their beliefs that are not the truth, it's a belief. And you know what I found interesting? I've had Jewish friends, I've had Muslim friends, I have a Christian friends, and it's only the Christians who impose their beliefs on you. Hmm. Because you guys have the truth. Nobody else does. Everybody else is wrong. You guys are great. It's the Jews. They're not so great. Children. Ciao.